Hey, how you doing? I'm Van. I started Lexapro today. I don't have anywhere to go with that. I'm just updating you on my life. Something you may have missed about me, little known fact if you will, is that I'm a big old nerd. I'm a big fat nerd. We talking anime, games, comic books. I mean, you name it, I'm probably into it or at least aware of it in some way, shape, or form. So as you can imagine, when I discovered Nerdcore, I was hooked. I was in. My first experience with Nerdcore was well before I knew what the name of the genre was because it was on Newgrounds. And it was, I think... Gino's Maze? I think that's the song? Maybe it's an animation or something. It was a Super Mario RPG song um, that I found on Newgrounds. That was my very first introduction to it. Couldn't tell you who made it. Couldn't tell you if it's still up. I it, This was my entry point. This was my gateway. The first real forays into Nerdcore that I had were either Dan Bull, much like everybody else, Skyrim epic rap, epic Skyrim rap, rap Sky- Mr. Duggleby is probably the best nerdcore rapper from a technical perspective in general. And even early, early on in his rap career, it really showed that he knew what he was doing. I say early on, he may have been underground before moving to nerdcore on YouTube, I really don't know. But on the other side, my number two was Hi, I'm Ron. And, uh, that channel's dead now. He's doing stuff, like he, uh, he's he got credits on IMDb, he was the voice of somebody significant, uh, relatively at least, it's Aquaman from the Lego Batman movie, I think it is. So, like, go you, Ron. Fuck yeah. But his was the Get Played series. I loved that, as, a, as like, I wanna, again, I wanna say a kid, I was a teenager. It feels like longer ago than that, like, I feel like I was in, like, sixth grade, but maybe I'm just crazy. Since its inception, Nerdcore has shifted dramatically for what is and isn't Nerdcore. I should probably go ahead and mention, uh, the, the individual who invented Nerdcore, or at least coined the phrase. Even in old-school hip-hop, really especially in old-school hip-hop, you see a lot of references, especially to comic books. Comic book references are so deep within the actual old-school hip-hop game. Like, MF Doom basically made a career out of his face being the Doom Mask. That's not what he made a career out of. He made a career out of being one of the best rappers that's ever existed, but that's another story. That's another debate. He just also happened to have a Dr. Doom mask on and make a lot of comic book references. But within the last five years or so, a shift began occurring, a, a difference, a change, if you will. And that shift is from a focus on video games to a focus on anime. I'm not faulting this, I'm not saying this is a bad thing. But the more I sat and thought, the more I became a little concerned. Just for the health and, I guess, wealth of Nerdcore and all of those who participate in it. I have three major issues with Nerdcore in the way that it exists right now. But before I get into that, I'm gonna need you to subscribe to the YouTube channel right here. Press the button. Thanks. That's cool of you, I appreciate that. But seriously, thank you everybody so much for watching, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to listen to me talk about nonsense. And if you like just a variety channel, I guess, just me talking about stuff, hang out. Please, I'd appreciate it. So I think the most obvious issue with Nerdcore, and one that a lot of people have pointed out in the past, is a lack of faces in Nerdcore. And I know, I know, I know what you're thinking, fan. Everyone said this. Fuck, Screwface Jean has said that, and he don't give a fuck about Nerdcore. But I think what people really mean is not a lack of a face. It's lack of personality. Personality is what drives success in the entertainment industry. If you don't have personality, you can't be entertaining as a person. Because you lack something substantial that makes you unique. Of course, everyone has their own personality, but whenever you go online against some of the biggest names and the biggest hits and the biggest numbers, you have to. You have to reach out, grab it by the balls, squeeze as hard as you can to get every drop of that personality out of yourself. Terrible analogy. And most of Nerdcore has become semi-aware of this. You see most of them with a second channel that is devoted to reaction content. That's a wonderful start. Now start fighting. Start arguing. Start beefing. Don't get me wrong. I love how close-knit and friendly the Nerdcore community is. It is one of my personal favorite things about it. But if you're an artist who's starting in Nerdcore who wants to break out into something else, you need something to break out with. You need that personality, and you need the attention of the public. That's how celebrities do it. That's how mainstream musical artists do it. They say or do some weird, stupid, 
head-ass thing that ends up propelling them to the top of the news cycle just in time for an album to drop. It's 101. I don't know what 101. We're gonna say music 101. We're gonna say public manipulation 101. People love to look at a train wreck, to watch a massacre. People will stand by and do nothing while a monkey is beating a child to death at the zoo. Why? Because it's crazy. You don't see that kind of thing every day. But let's say as an artist, you have drama come out where you're just doing some crazy thing and everybody's paying attention to you. Everyone is looking at you. Everyone is seeing you. And then you release that album, right? But the thing is, if your style is unique enough on its own and your music is good enough on its own as well, you're not going to lose fans. You're going to gain fans because people who would have never looked at you, never would have heard of you, come after you. They look for you. They look for a reason to not like you, and then they realize that they do like you, in fact. Have I been neglecting you? I probably have. I'm sorry. Now, don't, don't get me wrong. People are not going to like you. And if you do it badly, if you don't have the charisma to back up your actions or to justify the things that you're saying or doing, you're, you're going to fall a little flat on your face. There's a reason why usually celebrities are managed. You know, they're managed by an individual They've got publicists, they have people to drum up the hype for them and to spread their news for them. Always revealing just enough to be entertaining without being damning. So it is a bit of a difficult one to do, but it is important. If you want to grow, you have to take risks. If you want to improve, you have to be daring. Also, Darren, I'm not trying to talk shit, but like, I know you don't. Something else that ends up being detrimental to nerdcore, and something that nerdcore requires at the exact same time is the entertainment cycle. The modern entertainment cycle moves at a speed that I could not begin to actually fathom. My son quotes memes to me on a regular basis that I've never heard of, and I'm still pretty, like, on the internet, and I cannot keep up with it. I'm such an old man, and nerdcore has to follow this entertainment cycle. In a lesser extent, they don't have to follow the memes. I mean, you kind of do. You kind of do if you want to be an influencer on the internet, too. But they have to keep up with, at the moment, mostly the anime cycle. They have to keep up with what is hype. They have to keep up with what is good. They have to keep up with what is popular. All the new releases. They have to watch at least enough of it to sprinkle in a few references that are accurate. I'm sure a lot of them skim or, like, what's the word I'm looking for here? Or spark notes it. But the entertainment cycle is also getting faster. It's getting more rapid. We're being bombarded quicker and quicker every day until at some point that bubble's gonna pop and we're just gonna stop. We're gonna stop growing as an entertainment society for a little while and rest. When that happens, and I'm saying it like it's definitely going to, this is 100% scientifically accurate by the way. This is peer-reviewed, fact-checked. But when that eventually does happen, whenever that inevitability occurs, most of the nerdcore artists are not really gonna be able to stand on their own two feet anymore. And don't get me wrong, significant strides have been made within the last few years whenever it comes to nerdcore rappers rapping about things that aren't nerdcore related things. That was a sentence I just said. You got songs like Easy Bag with um, DPS and Game Boy Jones, where they do two things very well. They show a lot of personality, and they rap about something that isn't nerdcore. But truly, there are very few who I really feel like could stand on their own if it wasn't for the modern entertainment cycle. Rustage, DPS, Schwabity, and probably Freshy, Freshy Canal. Stupendium would be on that list, but they are not necessarily, in my mind, the same as Nerdcore. They're more like nerd theater, in the best possible way. They, they are lyrically impressive. They are one of the better rappers in the Nerdcore community, but they aren't really going for the same vibe. And Dan Bull is just understood to be in the Dan Bolt category. And Cam Steady lives in Pokemon. It's just his house. He has a timeshare, probably. But at some point, that gimmick's gonna run out. We're gonna stop caring. That's not a that's not a dig at Cam specifically. Just Pokemon rap in general. But why is this such a big deal for a lot of other nerdcore rappers? Well, I think that goes into issue three, which is hyperfixation of genre. Nerdcore is not about the one making the music, at least at a base level. Nerdcore is about a thing. Nerdcore is an individual writing something that may have something to do with his heart, with their soul, and with her liver. Your music, as a nerdcore artist, 
is different than it would be if you just made music about yourself. When you compare, like, when Dylan did his, his song that I can't remember, but where he rapped about his life and how he had survivor's guilt for something that he could not control, that stuck with me. That resonated in my mind. And while I like listening to Nerdcore, I don't feel it, and that's really what it's missing. But this hyperfixation of genre keeps artists from putting their soul into their work, from putting their heart into their projects. There's always going to be a filter of the thing that you are rapping about, or the thing that you're performing, the thing that you are creating, even though it comes from you, is still filtered. Part of the human experience, part of human culture, is music. Every society in all of human history has had music. We are inherently musical people. And one of the biggest reasons for this is the amount of emotion and the amount of thought and feeling that you can put in to just the strum of a guitar, just the beat of a drum, just the sound of a saxophone or a trombone. It doesn't matter the instrument. You could take two rocks and smack them together in a sad way, I'm sure. But having this filter sets the expectation for the listener, sets the expectation for the one coming into this and waiting for their product. And yeah, the stuff you make that comes from your soul may not be as focused, it may not be as clear-cut, it may not be as well-received, at least at first. Just make more about you. Make more about the thing you know the most about. Rap, sing, perform from the heart. As stupid as that sounds. And also, just just bear with me because I'm, I'm, I'm giving an impromptu issue, an issue that I wasn't uh, prepared for. It's not written down, so I... Can't promise it's going to sound right. The small problem with Nerdcore that I'm thinking of right now is that Nerdcore and its fans is very masturbatory. It is self-gratifying. It is self-congratulating. The fan base bounces from reaction YouTuber to reaction YouTuber in order to watch them react to the content that they just watched. And then those end up going to others and then going back to the original to, so they can experience the same things. You have the actual artists, the nerdcore artists right here in the back, also making reaction content. They are all aware of each other. They interact regularly, comment on each other's things regularly. And so it ends up being almost like a box that they're stuck in. Like you're getting views, you've got an audience forever, but that audience is never really going to change. You're just going to trade them back and forth for a long time. Also, to go back on number three, we also need y'all to take more risks, by the way. When you have this filter that you know you're going to run into and that you know that you're going to pass through, you're going to alter your style a little bit, most likely. You're going to try to make it adhere to a theme, but still be relevant. That's why we have mostly rap, I think. Why are the things that I'm saying of any relevance or any merit whatsoever? They're not. I am no one. I have no affluence, I have no power, I have no money, I have nothing that could change the way anyone thinks about this. And being that I have no money, no affluence, no power, I, it kind of sounds like I'm just another member of the general public. And my opinions can't be unique. They may be in the minority, they're probably in the minority. And if you thought about it for long enough, you might come to the same conclusions. So how do we fix this? Just put your fucking back into it, man. Because the fun thing... The funnest thing possible will happen when you take step three into consideration. When you take number three, this music becomes personal for you. This music becomes your music. This is yours. You will defend it. You will fight for it. You will argue for it. And with that comes the personality. With that comes the entertainment. With that comes the staying power. Because now it's about you. And really, it is a shame that... Modern media really tends to focus on the individual, but you have to focus on the individual as well if you want to succeed, if you want to grow. I say that with uh, less than 800 subscribers. Hello, Pot. Meet Kettle. Oh, hey, how you doing, Kettle? Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it a lot. This is the last video that I'm going to be making over any kind of music in the, for the foreseeable future. I may come back and make like a country music video at some point, but that's going to be like months down the road, most likely. Again, please subscribe. I would 
super duper appreciate that. Super duper. Wow, I haven't used that since grade school. Grade school! I haven't said grade school ever! I haven't said super duper since, like, elementary school. Elementary? Kubo. What are you eating? I feel like you're hiding it. Is it in your lips? Is it in your gums? Y'all have a great rest of your night. <laughs>